And let's get started. Using a four and a half millimeter crochet hook, let's take our yarn and start with a slip knot. We will then loosely chain about 25. This will be about six and a half inches or 17 centimeters. My little purse is going to be about six inches wide. If you would like this wider, just continue with more chains. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to work into the back side of the chain in that little loop or bump. Working into that back bump, we're going to do a single crochet. And then we will single crochet all the way along in that back bump of every stitch. It should look like this. So here we are at our last stitch and on this last stitch we will put four single crochet all into that one spot. So one, two, and we kind of have a knot there. So we're going to try to place the other two stitches on the other side of the knot. Let's do three and four. We will then be working along the back side of that chain. Now continuing down, let's put one single crochet into each of these stitches. So we're going to go under both loops or under that V section of the stitch. So working underneath both and doing our single crochet. And then into the next one. And then continue this all the way down to the end. When you have reached all the way to the end, we're going to work into that first stitch that we did. And we want four stitches on each end. So here we have put four. So on our other end, we would like four as well. So there's already one there. So now we're gonna work in and put three single crochet in that first stitch. So here's one, sorry, there we go, two, and three. Now we have the four stitches. So this is our fourth stitch here, our beginning one. But we're going to continue this row starting right into that stitch here. So right there is our fourth stitch. So we have one, 
two, three, four. Remember, we're not joining the rows, we're continuing. So the next stitch here will be our first one after the corner. So let's just place a marker in there so we know where our, our ends are. Let's put one single crochet into each stitch until we reach our other end. We are stopping here before the four stitches. Now we're going to place two single crochet in each of these next four stitches to go around the corner. There's the first two, two in the next, two in the third one, and two in the fourth. You now have eight stitches going around the corner. Now put one single crochet in each stitch until you reach the other end. So let's stop just before the four on the corner. The one, two, three, four. I will meet you there. Here we have eight on one corner, and these are our four stitches from our first round. So in these four stitches, we will now put two single crochet in each of the next four stitches. So there's two. two, two, and in the last one we will put two. We have now reached the marker and we can take this marker out. Our stitches now will be in the back loop. We will do single crochet, back loop only, from here on in. So just going into that back loop and single crochet. And we're going to do this for the entire height of our little purse. So back loop only, one in each stitch, continuing around and around. You can see how it makes this nice little edge by going into the back loop. This stitch is what creates our pattern. Look how beautiful these rows are. Continue around with one single crochet in each stitch. Remember, there are no more increases, just one in each. Here is my little purse. My size is about six by six or 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. When we do the flap, it will be a little bit longer. So stop at whatever size you would like. So let's stop our stitches here. This will now be the back of our purse and the beginning of the flap. So we're gonna place another marker. You don't really need to count your stitches, but this flap should be at the back of the purse. So just make sure it's the same on each side. From this point, we will now do a chain one and turn. 
we're going to start in that very first stitch. So start in that very first stitch and do a single crochet. Going through both loops, we will single crochet all the way across. Continue until you reach the marker. Let's remove the marker and put our stitch. This is our last stitch. Now we will chain one and turn. Again, start in the first stitch and let's single crochet all the way across. Here we have our last stitch, making sure you go under both loops. Let's do a chain one and turn. Now we will do a decrease on every row. Our decrease will be skipping the first stitch. So let's skip the first stitch and single crochet all the way across. By doing one decrease in each row, it will start taking the shape of the flap. Remember to always go into the last stitch, chain one and turn, and then starting with the decrease. So skip the first stitch, going into the next, and continue this until you have your desired length for your flap. This is what my flap looks like. And I think I'm going to stop here, but you can go as long as you would like, even to a point. I'm just seeing what my button will look like on my purse. So I think my button, I'm going to need about three stitches for the button to go through. So now I will find center. On my purse, I have 17 stitches. Stitch number eight will be my center. You can then place a marker. If you have an even amount, your center might be two stitches in the center. You'll have to adjust this for the size of your button and stitches and where center is. Let's chain one and turn and still skip that first stitch. And then I'm going to stop just one stitch before center. I will be skipping three stitches for my button, but I will make four chains. Two, three, and one more, four. So I always like to do one more stitch than the chains that are left, just so it has enough to go around the button easily. So skipping my three, I will do my single crochet on the other side. I can now remove my marker 
and if you would like, you can just test it out at this time to see if your button actually fits in this space. Then continue with single crochet to the end. Chain one, turn, skip your first stitch, and single crochet until you reach your chain. I will now put four single crochet in that four chain space. There's two, three, and four. And then continuing my single crochet into the next stitch and then all the way to the end. Make sure you test your button at this point that it isn't too big or too small of a space. From here we will now crochet down along the edge and then on the front of the purse make a crochet, come back up and then up to the top and we will stop where we have left off right here. So let's crochet all the way around. Start by just putting one single crochet at the end of each row. So find that little spot where you can see the end of the row and place your single crochet. This is how it should look and we will be going all the way till we reach back to this point here. If you would like you could place a marker there. Coming into the corner, we're going to place our stitch in this row here, and then we're going to place a stitch in that very first stitch at the front of the purse. So right in there. And now going through both loops at the front, go all the way across. So let's continue across and I'll meet you at that next corner. We will do the same thing. We're putting one stitch here at the front of the purse and now we're going to go to the ends of the row and put one single crochet at the end of each row. Now you can continue up the side and go around this corner here and I'll meet you back at the beginning. Here we are back at the beginning. We just placed the one single crochet in each stitch. 
We can then cut our yarn, pull through, and let's close with an invisible stitch. We will place our needle from front to back, pulling snug, and then we're gonna go back down into the spot where it came from. So right down into here. This will create another V on the top, and it should look seamlessly. And this kind of made a little bump up here, but I'm just gonna take my needle, put it underneath, and weave in my end back and forth till it's nice and smooth. We can then finish weaving in our other ends. This is where I had to join my yarn right here. It took me about a ball and a half of this yarn to make this tiny purse. So, and also your beginning one here. So let's weave that in. We can then place our button. So just figure out where you would like to have that button placed and then stitch it on. We can now start with the strap. So we're gonna leave a tail that's a little bit longer so we can attach the strap to the purse. So let's start by making a slip knot. Depending on how long you would like your strap, make a chain of about 120 to 150 stitches or 35 to 45 inches long. Make sure you chain loosely as we will be working into the back bump or loop of this stitch. So now starting into that second stitch from the hook, we're first going to start by putting two single crochet in that very first stitch. Remember, we're working in the back bump. And then we will put one single crochet in each stitch until we reach the other end. Once we have reached the other end, we're going to put four single crochet in that last stitch. Here we have the four stitches on our corner and now we will work back along going through both loops. We will put one single crochet in each stitch all the way to back to the beginning. And once we are back around, we will put two single crochet in that last stitch. From here, we will slip stitch to join in the very first single crochet. We can then chain one to start our second row. So let's start in that very first stitch. We're going to put one single crochet. We will then put two single crochet in the next stitch and it's creating a corner.
from here, let's just do one single crochet in each stitch all the way to the other end. We will stop just before we reach our four stitches. Here we are at the end with four stitches remaining. In the first stitch, we will put two single crochet, creating a corner, and then one single crochet, and again one more single crochet, and then two single crochet. can see here we have two stitches, one, one, and two. We'll now continue along the side with one single crochet in each stitch. When you get back down to the beginning, there will be two stitches remaining. We will put two single crochet in the first one, and then one single crochet in the next or the last, one here, and then leave a long tail and cut the yarn. With your darning needle, we can close this end of our strap. We can now attach our strap to our little purse. Attach the strap to the side of the bag. So using about four or five stitches from the flap, we will attach this strap. And then making sure your strap is straight, we will attach it also to the other side. Now we can add some fun to add to our little purse. Let's make a small flower. I just used some scrap yarn. Let's start with a magic ring. Making a loop on your finger, hold the loop, insert your hook, draw up, and chain. That's how simple your magic ring is. For the center of the flower, we will now put 11 single crochet into the ring.
We can then pull snug, cut our yarn, and close with an invisible stitch, which creates an extra stitch. So at the center of our flower should have 12 stitches. you now have 12 stitches. I usually just tie a knot and cut the yarn. I don't really weave these ends in. Using a different color, we can insert our hook into any one of the stitches, pull up the new color, and then do a chain three. We will then put two double crochet in the next stitch. Then chain three, and going into the next stitch, we will do a slip stitch. This is our first petal. And now we can just repeat. So chain three, two double crochet in the next, Again, chain three, slip stitch into the next, oops, not a double crochet, a slip stitch. Let's try that again. Slip stitch into the next and repeat again until you have six petals. Here's the start of our last petal. We're doing a chain three. Only one stitch is left, which is right here. We're gonna put our two double crochet in there.
one double crochet, two double crochet, and then chain three. And our last slip stitch will go down into the very first stitch that we made. And there you have your daisy. Make sure you leave a long enough tail so you can stitch the daisy onto your purse. For my beginning end, I secured it by just tying a knot to the other end. And now you can make as many daisies and as in many different colors as you would like to attach to your little purse. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and please hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!